The following program is a production of Pioneer Public Television. Funding for Prairie Sportsman is provided by the Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, an ideal Minnesota resort, luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Indoor Water Park, and more. Whatever the season or the reason, it's just more fun at the Arrowwood Resort. Strike Master, building quality fishing equipment for over 60 years. Visit StrikeMaster.com to learn more. Funding is also provided by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. And by the outdoor enthusiasts who are members of this station. Well, hello again, and welcome back to the kitchen in another edition of Prairie Sportsman. I'm just touching up the old Model 12 here. You know, a lot of sportsmen will agree that there's no better place to be than right outside in the open air, and we want to take you there. Let's take a look at what we have lined up for you this week. We'll flash back to an adventure with the whitetail in the deep woods. And Chef Kurt Anderson whips up another wild game recipe. Stay tuned. Prairie Sportsman is coming right up. Turn of the fall season is a favorite of many outdoor enthusiasts, and we'll bring you back to the woods. We'll stay hidden in our stand right above all the action with another Prairie Sportsman Outdoor Classic. No fall season would be complete without a trip to the Prairie Woods. Every year, the Prairie Sportsman cameras are in search of big bucks for our viewers to enjoy. Pull on your camo and let's head for the deep woods. in fall, a home for the big bucks. Stare down a big buck like I did and you'll find yourself mesmerized by the concentration and patience of a big buck. Wanting to break the spell, I wheezed at him in an attempt to spook him and break his concentration. <whistles> He stared me down until he found his time, and then with a wink, poof, he was gone. Deer hunter always wonders, could I fool a buck close up? Is my camo good enough? Will I move at the wrong time? Or will he just smell me? This little buck is too young to know or recognize what he had just walked into. He 
couldn't see me and stumbled through and was gone. together, looking for does. Along the way, a bite of shelf fungus might be nice. As the pair leave and the chasing continues, a good luck sign arrives. Last year, a possum showed up, and so did the bigger bucks. big buck. I could see him stalking around the edges of my little arena and I hoped he would come closer. I needed to get a better look at that headgear. to see a good buck, a really good buck. The kind of deer that makes you stare hard at the ivory tips on his antlers. And when you do see him, and you know he's a good one, you begin to appreciate your good luck in being there when he stalked by. He was trolling for does. He licked his nose and peeled back his lips to smell for does. He threw up his nose to smell for does. Not every buck is a trophy, as you know. And that day, I saw a pitiful sight. A crippled buck that could be the victim of an errant shot or a collision with a car. No matter what the cause, a mercy killing would be best. Sometimes in the prairie woods, we have to make decisions about what to do and how we must act as a sportsman. The woods was changing now. The winds picked up.
I worried about the squeaking of the stand, spooking the deer. But I needn't have. The bucks were on a mission. They didn't hear the creaking, or if they did hear it, they paid it no never mind. They marched through the woods, searched, searched. Every doe had to flee. Trolling. They paced through the woods. Even the does were sparring for dominance. It was the end of my time in the woods. The big buck had come and gone. Ironically, that same buck I had stared down as I came into the woods found me out. I had to go, taking my camera with me. But I came back, and I brought my 50 caliber Hawken with me. 50 grains of powder. Perfect. 50 yards. 50 yard broadside. 50 yards. Ooh. Beautiful. Oh, that was yeah. a great morning. A great morning it was. Now Brian and Andrew, uncle and nephew, dragged my deer out. It was a perfect prairie morning. The heritage is as old as our state and is in no way diminished by time. The upper Midwest today is still an area that marks its seasons by the string of opening days from fishing opener to the deer openings. We mark the years and pass on the heritage to the others, the sons and daughters who will carry on the outdoor lifestyle for all of us. Prairie Sportsman espouses the outdoor lifestyle that we feel must be passed on to the next generation. Our mission is to try to pass on a way of life that sustains us and relieves our stress to the next generation. It is also our aim to encourage families to experience the outdoors together as we did. Chef Kurt Anderson is back again this week, and he's been working on a recipe that I know you'll all enjoy. When Chef Kurt starts working on a wild game recipe, you know that it's going to be tasty. Let's take a look at what he has for us this week. Prairie Sportsman, tonight's the night. It's fondue party at the Anderson house. We've made a nice selection of items that we want to sit and play with. I got some walleye, I got some catfish. We give it a little seasoning and I want to share with you how this works. First, you've got to have your sweetheart tell you where the Lazy Susan is, but that's kind of fun. You could set this on the table, spin it around, everybody could have fun kind of cooking their own material. 
Now, it, there's a safety point to this that you're going to have to watch, so it needs some adult supervision. We're using a big fry daddy here, and we made some tempura batter. One egg, handful of flour, a little bit of milk, and you're good to go. And you want something that's going to be relatively this thick. Now, let's give it a try and see what happens. I've taken the opportunity to pan up some of this, or skewer up some of this, excuse me. So everything that you're going to do has to be dredged in a little bit of flour first. From there into the batter. Now if the batter is too thick, you're going to have trouble with it. You want it just thick enough so like this it sticks on. And in the fryer we go. The fryer should be at 350 degrees. Now let's try that with a piece of fish. So here we got some catfish. We got a little flour on it. You can see I've used a skewer pattern of in, under, and back out so it holds the meat very firmly. At that point in the tempura batter, shake off the excess. If you don't shake off the excess, it's going to come to the top. You only need just enough batter for that to cling on and away it goes, see? A lot of times in the restaurant, even when we're frying fish and we're putting the fish in the fryer using our hands, unfortunately, or tongs, but you got to hold that fish up a little bit so it gets a good bite right away. Now, same thing for the onions. You can see I've cut a wedge. This is actually kind of fun to do when you're out on your deck during the summertime. Onions work wonderful for tempura batter. Tempura has a great history to it, but you can see there just how important it is for that to keep going. And we're going to cook these till they become golden. Now, something that's unique that I wanted to show you is I uh, thought up some different ideas from the standard. So here's one of them right here. If you take a little bit of your wild game, chop that up, put that in the mushroom, pack it with a little cheese, we're going to make a little flavor nodule here that's just going to drive you wild. So we run our skewer through. This could be the most difficult part because sometimes the mushroom might want to crack. So we're going to give that a good push down. Now we're going to go down here and we're going to take away any moisture that should be there loitering that we don't want to have jump out at us. And now we give it the turn. Now you could do the same thing by putting some type of seafood mix in here as well. That's perfect. Look at that, nice and golden. Okay, now I want him to see a shot of this because it's important that that top stays way up there for just a minute. We've got to get that bottom to crust. Then we'll push him down in there. Because of the filling, we don't want him to cook too fast. I'll try another one like that too. Just to look real awesome there. Oh, we'll go down a little bit and we'll go through. Make sure I got a good bite on it. Yep, seems pretty good. Go over here. I'm going to add a little extra flour. Now we're talking. And there we go. See? Look at that. Nicely covered. See that other one's holding together pretty good, right, Bernie? Looks good. Yep. See? Now, you can hold that one down a little bit if you want, because then we can finish the top of them. There we go. I'll let that turn your way just a little bit. Now, another part of this that was kind of unique, and you maybe haven't tried, is play around a little bit with the flavors. So let's say I've got a piece of walleye here. I've got them strung on there pretty good, and now I'm going to do something really out of the ordinary. Let's move this to the side. I've got some white coconut here. and Let's say I put a little coconut down. Now, <clears throat> dip them in the batter. There we go. We're going to fish off the excess. Set them down in there. Just like that, and we're going to make some coconut walleye fingers, and it's that easy. Down in you go. Now when you do this, it's going to be important to clean your fryer oil afterwards because the coconut pieces that fall off will continue to flavor it otherwise. But for a one night thing, this is a perfect, perfect example of something you could try that's a little bit different. So we're frying, we're frying. Bam! Down we go, look at that. And just like this. I like to pull the coconut out of whatever container I'm using. If I was dredging right in that container, then I'd ruin it all. So I avoid that. There we go. 
Can I have a little background on him? Nope, he's crusted. He's perfect. Yes, that was one of the filled ones. So it looks like we got some success there. A little bit more on that one. Not much longer, but just a tad more. So now you see how it was done. We got to throw in a tomato one here. We're going to take and make a special sauce for this. That's why I reserved a bowl there just for this. And we'll decorate that up a little. Whoop, see that happens too where it doesn't stick. Acid material is usually a tougher one to utilize. Now he's done. Yep. He's perfect. Well done. All right. Green pepper and then I got him. We're all in there. See, that's the water coming out. Hear that crackle? Very important that you never have too much of that at one time in there. Water cools down that oil and it actually can make it jump right out of there. All right, here we go. So that, that sound is your enemy, that crackling. I think that one's done too. So? Yep, I think you got her. You did great. Bravo. Yeah, yeah now let's try something completely different. <clears throat> Having said that, we need to take our apple, cut them in half, is that the pepper crackling? My teeth chattering. It's okay. <laughs> hey, I tell the jokes here, you just have to help me cook now. Hey, I'm married. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, we're going to make an apple jack sauce. You want that, some of that? Sure. Yeah, we're going to put a little, we've got to put a little alcohol in there. Brandy's going to be our choice this evening. We're going to chop up some of these apples, as you see. Now, and none of these apples were grown in our yard, were they? Unfortunately. Nope, that's because maybe the, next maybe next year, you never know. Now, for our apple jack sauce, we're going to use a little yogurt. Uh, kind of we carried at our house the strawberry yogurt. I'm going to use a volume about half as much as the apples that I had. Okay. Then I want to take a little barbecue sauce, and again I want to use about maybe only a third that much. See that? If you can see that look inside. I'm making a dollop inside that yogurt. Now, with that having been said, here comes Happy Brandy. We just want to give him a little bit of. Spicing. There we go. Cap full and that should be enough for us. I know it'll be enough for her, but for me it'll be. <laughs> All right. Only takes a little. Only takes a little. And I'm sleeping. Yeah, yeah. We know. <laughs> Take a whiff. Does that smell? Can you smell it? Wow. Yeah, that smells kind of strong. I better taste that. Oh, well, that should do the job. Yeah. You'll be passed out by midnight. <laughs> you'll be out, and you'll be out like a light. No good night kiss tonight, that's for sure, right there. Now, so that's our applejack sauce. We're going to have fun with that. So then, to finish that off, you want me to make the lemon crown, or you want to? No, you're better at it than I am. Okay, she's just being nice. Here we go. Let's make ourselves a lemon crown. Whole lemon. We're going to. Rub the soot off our fingers, though. Are you done with this one? I'm done with that. Let's call that good, because we're, we're just going to snack here. We did really well with that, because I want you to taste taste good cooking. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Lemon Crown 101. What kind would you like? Pinwheel one? Sure. Pinwheel Lemon Crown it is. Okay. So here's, here's let's, let's watch this now, because we're going to do this only one time. We're going to make like a fish hook. So we're going to make a cut that goes in and kind of like a J. So here we go. Here's our J. Forefinger goes on where that cut started. Then I'm going to go up and I'm going to create that width, connect the J, slide the knife up, make another J, connect the J, slide the knife up. You with me so far, Bernie? There we go. Atta. Atta girl. See, that's why I love you. That's, that's it right there. Yeah. Now, I can make a J. <laughs> You're so pretty. Okay, now here we have it. We've completed our parameter. We pulled that apart and look at what we got. Wow, isn't that nice? All right, that's how we're going to garnish our plate because you you know how you like it. You like things pretty. 
Prairie Sportsman, you got to try this. Uh, you know what? I'm going to let you have first bite. Oh, we got to let them see what this looks like inside. Yes, cut that helmet. Okay, we got to cut that and let them see what it looks like inside. Here we go. Okay, this is ex this is perfect what you want. Hold hold that part. Now, it, it's crispy all the way around, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can see the cheese is melted real nice. You can see that the mushroom has held its shape real nice because we didn't cook it for a long period of time. But you see how important it is that the breading was thin. Look how nice that is. Now, here's, here's what you do. You who don't, uh, here's one beer burning right here. There you are. <laughs> Give that a try. <laughs> this is going to be hot now, so you better blow on it. Okay, ready? Yeah, this is the part where you're supposed to go, mmm. I am going, mmm. Man, we got to prompt you. Okay. It's very good. Tastes really good. good. Try this at home. You'll have a fun time doing it. It's a family event. You're all together. Thanks for watching. Very good. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, see, I told you. I told you. Well. I guess time flies when you're having fun, and this show went by in a flash. It's time to say so long for this show, but we'll be back next time with another episode of Prairie Sportsman. Prairie Sportsman is available online with more photos, video, and additional information. Follow the adventures and updates on Facebook and connect with more outdoor friends and enthusiasts. Funding for Prairie Sportsman is provided by... The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, an ideal Minnesota resort, luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Indoor Water Park, and more. Whatever the season or the reason, it's just more fun at the Arrowwood Resort. Strike Master, building quality fishing equipment for over 60 years. Visit StrikeMaster.com to learn more. Funding is also provided by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. And by the outdoor enthusiasts who are members of this station.